Good evening and welcome to Weathersfield Talk. I am Rick Gary, your host for this episode. This is our second episode of our new talk show where we talk about Weathersfield with people from Weathersfield. And last, uh, our last episode we spoke with the new police chief of Weathersfield. And tonight we're talking with the new town manager, Fred Presley. Fred, welcome to the program. Thanks, Rick. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. We love having our new uh, town leaders and our uh, people that run in the town come on and talk to the people in Weathersfield. Great forum for that. You've been the town manager now since May 9th? May 9th, yes. Excellent. So Fred, what I'd like to do is start by giving you a few minutes. Tell us a little bit about your background, where you come sure. from, and uh, give people a little idea where, uh, where you work. Sure, my pleasure. So I've been in government for at least the last 20 plus years. I was actually um, came right out of the uh, into the Army out of high school. Okay. I did four years active duties, most of that time in Germany. Yeah. back in the 80s, the Cold War. Um, after that, I went into college, and shortly after college, started working for government. I worked for the state of Rhode Island for about six years, and then I went to local government. First in planning, I uh, became planning and economic development director for Smithfield, Rhode Island. Okay. Um, and from there, I did a little private consulting and then went all, uh, to another community, West Warwick, as planning and economic development director. Okay. Shortly after that, I started the process of doing my master's in public administration. Um, I was offered the position for town manager in West Warwick when that became available and I took yeah. that and so I yeah. did that job for several years. Um, most recently I was county administrator down in Stafford County, Virginia. Oh, wow. It's a fairly large county of about 160,000 residents, a suburb of DC, okay. um, just north of Fredericksburg, Quantico, um, the uh, FBI Academy, all sure. that is there in Stafford. So it's, it's a uh, very diverse, very diverse, very busy community. Yeah. Um, I had about 1,200 employees, large organization, uh -huh. um, but it was a great experience for us. But um, you know, we are from this area, you know, Rhode Island. Uh, lived in Westerly, Rhode Island, for 20 plus years oh, okay. with my family. Raised, raised, raised our children there, and um, my wife's parents are still there. So we felt it was important to get back up oh. closer to family. And the Weatherfield, the, the Weatherfield opportunity came up, and it was you know we visited. My wife and I visited here, and we fell in love with the place. Oh, great, so. great. So, uh, so you're a New England, a New England person. Yeah, I, I, I won't say born and raised, but yeah. definitely raised since the age of three. I was born in the South, but uh, okay. So excellent. So Weathersfield's obviously uh, a lot smaller than you know Stafford, uh, different, but probably a little similar to some of the areas in Rhode Island you were. It's actually bigger in, in area to than West Warwick, but oh, really? the population is about the same. Yeah. Okay. So you've been on the job now since May, uh, May 9th, uh, and you're still here. That's a good Still thing. here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> what, uh, you know, there's a, quite a, there's a few things we can talk about uh, going on. I think the first thing I wanted to mention was uh, I ha I've heard a lot of people talking about the property tax relief. That's something we've always talked about in Weathersfield. Sure. Weathersfield has a, a fairly high mill rate yes. uh, in the town compared to other towns in the state. And when the governor passed this new law, it lowered the mill rate for high mill rate towns. Maybe you can explain a little bit how that affected Weathersfield. Sure, so um, essentially what the governor did was set a cap on the um, personal property tax or the motor vehicle um, tax. Right. And so Weathersfield tax rate was the same across the board for whether it be residential or personal property. This required us to lower that personal property rate down to the 36, I don't know the exact number okay. off the top of my head, but it, it dropped it pretty substantially. It was about a 27% um, oh, wow. cap drop. So um, that you know certainly proves to be very favorable to a lot of people. Obviously yeah. we have to have that money somewhere in the budget, right? Somehow, so we have to right. offset it. But actually it was a good year to do it in that respect because what's probably not great news for the citizens is that the um, the assessed value of a lot of those vehicles went up substantially yeah. this year. And as a lot of people know, the supply chain issues with the computer chips that they used to make right. the cars, cars were not available. Um, used car prices went through the roof. Mm -hmm. So they actually went up about 26, 27%. So even though you know <laughs> that rate went down, um, it, it's probably pretty close in terms of, you know most people's bills probably did not change that much on right. their car tax. Some did, some saw their rate go down depending on the type of car you had. Sure. Just like real estate, some probably saw it go up, but it was um, in the long term, it's gonna be a positive thing. And I know the state is also looking at now Right now we use the, uh, the native values, which is market value. Um, and what the state is looking at doing is making it so it's actually gonna be based on a always depreciating scale as opposed okay. to fluctuating to the, um, to the market. Okay. So, um, and there'll be a 
limit to how far that can go down. Sure. But, um, but that, I think, will help the consumers. And that's only on uh, vehicles? Yes. No other property tax? Correct. Okay. And it doesn't affect any business? Correct. Business vehicles? Other than, well, all vehicles. All, vi yeah. all vehicles, right? Yeah. But not any, any property that a business owner has? Correct. Okay. All right. Well, again, it's, it's a, and it, you have to also have to look at it that had it not happened, the car rates would have still gone up, the car values, and we'd be paying a lot more. We would have likely had to have adjusted the value because we can't, you know, by law, we're not going to take in any more than we need. Okay. So, um, so if if values go up, so as an example, we have to do, um, you know, reassessments of all the homes sure. this year. So it, it, it's revaluation year for us coming oh, up. Okay. So um, obviously the home prices are up pretty high too during COVID for whatever reason. You know, we saw that yeah. big spike as people wanted to get out of the cities, move into the suburbs. Um, so what we're seeing is those home values went up substantially in a place like Weathersfield. So we may very well end up lowering that mill rate okay. just to, to offset balance that out value. because we, we never collect more than, right. than we need to, to okay. fulfill the budget. So this year is a reassessment year? Yes. In 10 years. Okay. So people can expect in 2022? It'll begin, yeah, 2022 for the, for the next tax year. Yep. Okay. Because I know a lot of people get... Uh, a little nervous when they when they come to the house because is this going to be yeah. a full assessment? They're going to want to go in the house and True. look around. Yep. Okay. Full reval. So that's kind of a little people be prepared for when they come knocking on your Absolutely, door. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, so another big issue happening in town is the school. Yes. Renovation, rebuilding. Um, this is a huge project if it goes forward. Yeah, it's the largest project I think in the history of the yes. town of Weathersfield. Probably will be the largest. Um, that we'll see for at least for, for some time. Uh, the proposal is for all of the elementary schools. Right. So they're either going to be um, complete rebuilds or um, major renovations on the schools. We are going to go from five down to four, too. That's part of the pro process. So the new schools will be larger okay. to accommodate more students. But it's really, you know, all of those schools are very old. Um, yes. We spend a lot of money each year in upkeep. Yeah. And um, so this, the, um, the Board of Education um, went through and looked at several different options for how to approach this. You can do it piecemeal right. and say we're going to do this school this year and you know, right. three years from now we're going to come back for another one. Um, they felt that being that we have to go out to bond for this that it might be uh, a better approach to do it all as one, but it is a large ticket item. It's about $278 million we're talking about for all four of those schools. Um, you know, we did a quick analysis based upon what we need to borrow out of that. Um, you know, obviously the state provides funding sure. for that as well. But with our share of it and estimating interest rates that we all know are going up pretty substantially, um, you're probably looking at, you know, at its height, uh, you know, six cents on the mill rate just right. to cover the debt service for this for project. That. Right. Yeah. Now that, uh, obviously that's a proposal by the Board of Ed. Uh, nothing's in stone yet. Correct. Uh, are there any other proposals or are they just kind of focusing on this right now? They are focusing on this and that did come before the town council. The, the, the council um, basically agreed in principle to put it to the voters to decide. Okay, for a referendum. So for a referendum. So we actually have at our next meeting on August 1st is the first reading or the introduction of the ordinance okay. for that bond and, and the language for the referendum. Um, and then that will be, there will be a public hearing and a vote on that on the meeting on September 6th. There's only one meeting in August, so okay. there will be a break. Um, give people an opportunity to kind of learn more about it. I think that's a good timing uh, with the summer as people are coming back from vacations. Right. Um, we're going to be putting together uh, information packet for people to, so they can understand the project. Because it's very complex. You know, yes. you're talking about decommissioning certain schools. You're talking about tearing yes. some down and rebuilding new on-site. Right. Um, using the old school on site, so you'll have two yes. schools on one site while another one's being built. It's very complex. Wow. Obviously, anytime you're doing um, renovations in an existing school, you're very limited to what you can do. Sure. So this allows sure. them to do it in a way that they're not you're not affecting the school children doing it while, while they're, they're in the building. Yeah, because so that happened important. at the high school. It did and when it my did. kids were there. Yeah, and it was very disruptive. Absolutely. Um, so, and going down to four schools, obviously, you know, it can be. Uh, tough sometimes for citizens to no accept question. their local school going away yeah. um, but you know and they're hoping to have that on this November's referendum yes okay so pay attention out there if you feel strongly in one direction or the other uh, you need to go to these meetings and you need to, to really understand what's going on and, that, and that's that's really key people have to get engaged in this this yeah. this is big I mean this is yes. a 
this is you, huge. you haven't seen any project like this. The high school was huge, but this yeah. is, you know, you're talking about four elementary schools. So. Wow. And I'll say, you know, the elementary schools, something has to happen. No question. All right. Uh, Hamner and Highcrest are really uh, almost embarrassing uh, in their state you know, just because of their age and when they were built and uh, the way they were built. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I, I went on a tour of all the elementary schools with, with the superintendent, and just like you said, I mean, they're yeah. just, they're old, they're tired, they're, yeah. they, you know, they're, major safety issues you know the, you know just just in terms of technology today sure. and you know where where we should be with those schools there's only so much we can do right. to retrofit just like you said the way they were built oh, it was it, it was a different time in the 1960s right yes, exactly. um, we weren't seeing the types of activities we're seeing and now. they were into open school open concept open concepts, and all these things yeah. so yeah. i mean i went to an open concept school for mm -hmm. high school and uh, you know <laughs> it that's long gone too so thank, thank goodness yeah um, so that's a big one are there any, uh, we have a new economic development director. We do, yes. Fairly new, correct? Yes, yes. Joy Izak um, started full time around the time that I came on board, actually. Okay, because that's, uh, that's another important thing that people uh, you know, always want to talk about, that why aren't businesses moving to Wethersfield? Trader Joe's, if I hear another yeah. person talk about, why didn't Trader Joe's come to Wethersfield? <laughs> All right. Now obviously, most of those decisions are you know, made at a level, at a corporate level, where they do their demographic studies and they decide what's best. Uh, but having a strong economic development director is important. Is there anything that we're focusing on uh, that, he, that you think they're focusing on or should be? Uh, you know, Wethersfield's kind of a drive-through town, if you will, mm -hmm. between Hartford. Sure. You know, but is there any talk about, you know, enterprise corridors or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, certainly the, the focus that we have, because, you know, Wethersfield is really, for, for the most part, built out. Right. It's a residential community, which is why our mill rate is what it is. Right. Because they're just we don't have the the land opportunities that you know um, some of the surrounding you know, Glastonbury yeah. or even Rocky Hill yeah. or some of the other areas have um, around us. So that means we have to be more creative. Yeah. Um, the areas that we do have are either um, underutilized spaces right. along the major corridors, and that's going to be Silas Bean or the Berlin Turnpike. Those right. are really the two major focused areas that we have, um, and we are zeroing in on both of those okay. so that we have uh, projects in play we're looking at ways that we can um, improve uh, both traffic flow and pedestrian flow along the silas dean um, okay. one of the issues that you know i immediately saw when i got here is that the silas dean is for all intents and purposes is a wall between two sections of yeah. weathersfield it doesn't have to be that way there are great examples around the country where people have taken these major intersections where you have to walk you know, it seems like forever to get across Silas Dean, and yeah. unless you're healthy <laughs> and fit and can run, um, you know, that you're Make taking- it before that light turns red. You're, you're, you're taking yeah. a chance, and a lot of kids cross those roads every day right. for school. Um, I think we could do a lot better job, and there's a lot of opportunity now with all the funding and the Infrastructure Act, and with uh, even some of the ARPA funds that we might be able to tap into to create some projects that create pedestrian nodes at some of the major intersections. Okay. Kind of bring up the game a little bit along sure. Silas Dean, and then, I think one of the joy is Zach's first, um, I know because she's doing it already, one of her first um, acts is to start going around to these properties that could be considered to be underutilized, right. reaching out to the landowners, trying to get them to the table and working with them to see what can we do to help you market your sure. property and, and make it right. more um, than it is and try, try to create opportunities for businesses to come in. Right. Doing the same thing on the Berlin Turnpike more of a challenge there from a That's traffic flow perspective, sure. but there's still things that we can do. And so we're looking at that and we're looking at ways that we can entice other businesses. And we're, we've already had several meetings with property owners along the Turnpike, Good. bringing them in and trying to have those conversations, saying what can we do to help you to, to get these properties redeveloped. Because obviously our, you know, one of our main focuses in Wethersfield is always old Wethersfield, right? With right. Uh, tourism and it's beautiful, obviously down there. There's a lot of issues down there with parking and things like that. Uh, what any anything happening down in Old Weathersfield? Yeah, we have several things going on in Old Weathersfield right now. We, um, you know, right before I was coming on board, uh, I know that um, you know the, there was a proposal, um, a project presented to the council on some safety improvements along Main Street okay. with um, improved crosswalks, um, narrowing some of the areas, making it safer crossings for folks. Right. Um, in addition to that, we've. Uh, we had to uh, receive funding from the state to look at developing a new parking lot behind the fire station. Okay. Um, so we've got several uh, different scenarios for that. Yep. Um, as well as we have um, some uh, other projects we're looking at to enhance 
the parking in that area. Obviously, mm -hmm. parking is, is an issue, no, no question, in the summertime um, and anytime we're doing events. Sure. So um, we're trying to be as creative as, po as possible. But one of the things, I, you know, when I talk about what we're doing on Silas Dean, I think there's an opportunity there that we're also looking at in that if you can create a more pedestrian-friendly corridor along Silas Dean, okay. then now you've opened up the um, municipal building parking lot. Oh, okay. And if you can incorporate a shuttle, particularly for events, and we're going to test that out. I know we've been working with the shopkeepers down on Main Street for the Porch Fest that's coming up. Okay. We're going to close off a section of Main Street like we usually do for um, the holiday okay. stroll. Um, so we're going to close that section off for Porch Fest, but then um, the uh, shopkeepers are also going to bring in um, a, tr a shuttle. A shuttle basically like a trolley looking sure. shuttle that'll go from say the um, you know right down to Main Street at the intersection of Church Street probably okay. go down to the um, DMV parking lot up to our parking lot oh, okay. and then back around so um, we're gonna test idea. that out and it might be something that we can incorporate into some of the projects we're doing to make it more of a, a more permanent fixture and even uh, on a big event uh, you know the municipal parking lot really isn't that far it's, it's walking not. distance to Old Weathersfield Absolutely. So for the Keene Foundation Carnival for other events like that Right. Uh, it can definitely, that's, that's a good idea. You're right about the Silas Dean. It's always, it seems to be like a, a barrier. You're right about that. And, uh, you know, just people thinking about going, crossing it, getting over, it's like this, it's almost a barrier. You're it right. Is. It is. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't make sense no. but when you think about it. It is. It is. And it seems like it's a, it's a long distance, but it's not. You walk no. down Church Street and you're there. It's, you're it's right pretty there. quick. So, and like I said, we, we also have other projects that are that are coming online with, with new companies coming in and new developments happening. So sure. it's, it's an exciting time, I think. There's a lot of opportunity here. Well, there's been a lot of apartments uh, in Wethersfield uh, built over the last few years. Uh, two on Ridge Road. You've got one down in the first one on the Silas Dean Highway that's ever you know, been built probably since the, the 60s, Borden, yeah. the Borden. Great um, job of that. So you are getting a lot of uh, young people in town yep. wanting to live here. So now we have to make them want to stay here. Yeah, you have to provide that, that the right. reason for them to be here. And I think not just for people to come here, young people to come here and live here, but I think also to provide the opportunity for those that grew up here to stay here. Right. Because, you know, some of the, like we talked about the price values, you know, the house values, um, you know, yes. they're going up and it's becoming very difficult for first time home buyers to engage in a market like this. So having those opportunities for right. apartments or condos, things like that, we need a diversity of housing to really sure. have the full gamut of, of opportunities for folks. And you mentioned, uh, you talked before, and it's true that we don't have big land masses uh, to do campuses and real build outs, but there is one spot up on Progress Drive that's always, that's what I would assume one of our underutilized areas that we're talking about. It is, and we actually have some uh, folks we're talking to oh, on good. that one too, yeah. Good. And obviously, uh, Teddy's Frozen Foods, <laughs> the old frozen food building right. in Silas yeah. Every Every election, that becomes a big uh, uh, talking point that somebody's going to do something with that. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it, all we can do right now is work with the landowners to sure. try to work, you know, come up with ideas and help right. them to help them to facilitate something. Right. You know, th there has to be willingness there, and they've right. got to, you know, want to do something. And I think once we're able to develop programs, and we're working with the Economic Development um, uh, Improvement Commission and also the Redevelopment Commission to come up with um, programs that we can provide right. to current landowners and new businesses coming in to help incentivize them to do something. Excellent. Uh, another another thing that comes up all the time is regionalization. Are we because I know we're part of a regional yes I don't know, committee or whatever you want to call sure. it. Is there any anything going on in that respect where Weathersfield's looking to do some regional things with other towns? We are ac absolutely participating with you know Krog, the um, Central Region Council of Governments. Uh, they're, they're a great organization. We meet regularly. Where I'm on several of their committees out of okay. the gate um, and. Um, I think they're a great group. One of the things we're looking at, um, different aspects of local government where all of the communities right now are having real struggles finding employees for. Right. You know, it's a difficult time right now if you're looking to hire sure. people in certain, particularly in certain sectors. So some of the things that always come up right now are those sectors that aren't unique to government. So right. when we're competing with the private sector, it's very difficult for us to do, particularly when, you know, things like pensions and things like that are sure. a thing of the past. Um, so we have to be more creative about how we approach these things. So, Krog is looking at um, you know regional opportunities for you know the assessment departments okay. for even like building inspection and human resources. Though those things, okay. IT, um, now how they do that, it might just be like 
they'll have a rider on board as people lose people and it takes time for them to fill that there's somebody to come in okay. and fill the role or it might be something more substantial than that they're just kind of really just getting into that process phases. but I think it's something that frankly we need to look at um, and, and need to look at how we can work together because you know 169 cities and towns in, yes. in such a relatively small state I dealt with in, in Rhode Island too 39 right. cities and towns in what seems like a county, you know, yeah. it seems kind of crazy and all the various school districts, you know, sure. the money that goes into all those things. It, it is. And of course, there's other issues, uh, you know, other big ones are like fire departments and other things that you have. Yes. You know, it's very expensive to run these departments and I, people fight. Look, uh, New Englanders don't like change. No. But regionalization, I think, is critical in, right now because I know it, just getting anything that's volunteer related is extremely difficult yes. uh, right now. So I think regionalization can be a big, a big bonus to all. And that is something we're looking at with CROG too. One of the things that I noticed when I first came in here, I, I asked when's the last time we did a standards of cover study for our fire right. and rescue. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what the answer is. So, um, so we yeah. need to do that. Sure. And it's something that several other communities are looking at too. So right. as you know, it becomes more difficult for volunteer, at what point do we look sure. at bringing on some professional capacity? I yeah. dealt with this in Stafford. Stafford uh, county was a down in Virginia was a um, completely volunteer force not only about I would say 15 years ago yeah. um, today it is a combined force okay um, and it is uh, but they have 200 plus professional firefighters wow. on now and we just did a standard of cover report that says they should have 600 professional wow. <laughs> so it's one of those things where is the population grows now we don't have the population growth issues that Stafford has because they right. gr they've grown 20 percent in the last 10 years wow. but um, but we still need to deal with the sure. fact that the volunteerism is going down yeah. population has grown right um, Weathersfield's a traffic uh, an attractive right. place to be plus we have a lot of older housing stock yes. and that brings its own challenges so we need to, we need to do those types of studies and take it seriously. But you're also though. adding new types of housing like these big apartment buildings absolutely things, which changes no question which is why you need to do a standard of cover because yes. it's, the town has changed uh, are there any other uh, issues that you uh, would like to talk about? I've been talking a lot. Well, you know, it's uh, I'm still kind of drinking from the fire hose, you know, <laughs> so there's, there's, there's a lot going on here. Um, yeah. You know, for me, some of the organizational things that I think are important that we address, the standards of cover is one yes. example, but just um, in general, um, I talked about the trouble finding certain employees, certain positions. That's not just at the um, executive level positions, that's throughout the organization, and particularly a lot of the entry level positions. So I think okay. we need to do a class and compensation study across the organization so that okay. we can see how we can pair because we're losing people to other localities um, and that's not a good place to be so those are some things that that I will you know look to be doing in the, in the near future um, and then just some of the organizational development pieces that uh, there's been a lot of transition here over sure. recent years I think um, that's important in an organization that people see that their job is a place they can grow and that right. they can um, improve themselves and then you know progress yeah. throughout the organization and I just think that we need to do more of that so those are things I'm going to focus on as well well and that's important too like you said you mentioned the pensions are gone and that's in all municipalities yeah right that old school work for the town you 20 years you get your pension you're right. out. Right. those don't exist anymore no they really don't so and you have to be competitive whether it's uh, salaries benefits and and sometimes uh, taxpayers or people some people don't understand you know that you have to do that Right. There's this old way of thinking that the municipal worker gets paid less, but he, yeah. he's got a pension. You know, but you have to pay competitive now. And I'll tell you, and it's, it was that way pretty much everywhere, this way, anywhere I've been really, is that you know, people also think the municipal workers just sit around doing nothing all day. <laughs> and um, it's just simply not the case. We have right. very lean staff for the work that's done in this town. Sure. Um, and people work frankly multiple jobs you know when I saw you know we had an HR department of one you know we have uh, you know for an organization with 200 employees yeah. it's just you know it's impossible we, we've got to do um, better and be more realistic otherwise we burn people out and they go away too that's right. another reason why people leave right sure. it's not always money um, or benefits it can just right. be workload so we have to be aware of that and say well what is it that we need to do so maybe maybe the answer is in part doing the regionalization piece you talked about right. or maybe it's if we add a couple people here and they can assist in multiple departments sure. so we have to be creative about it we don't want to put a huge burden on the taxpayers but at the same time we need to continue to do the work for the people so um, how do we do that in a way that's most efficient well that's the other thing because people people also expect a certain level of service whether it's in your parks department 
or wh whatever it is, your physical services, and you can't have that level of service if people are turning over, if you're not being able to keep employees. Right. Because right? I do know that, you know, Weathersfield is a beautiful town, um, but, and we have beautiful parks, but there are areas of the town that need work. No question. I, like for me, and I've said it for years, I think that the Weathersfield Cove is a hugely underutilized and, and uh, underdeveloped area yeah. that could be beautiful. Yeah. And, but you can't do it uh, on a limited staff like that. No. You can't keep it up. No, and you've got to invest the money um, in yeah. not just the staffing, but in the, you know, so the, we actually do have a project for the Cove where we're going to get rid of the Jersey barriers and oh, put good. in a median and make it a lot nicer down oh, there. Nice. But to your point, now you have to have the staff to maintain that right. um, and keep it nice and, um, and the staff to, uh, you know, police, if you will, sure. and go around because we've had issues with vandalism and people absolutely. doing things. You know, anytime absolutely. you have a place like the Cove or even any of the parks, yeah, absolutely. You know, people find out where you can go and kind <laughs> of hang out and hide. So, yeah. um, so we, we have to just kind of step right. up our game in the maintenance yeah. piece. Well, and I think that's important, too, uh, that the amenities that you have in town have to be, you have to have good amenities and they have to be up, you know, kept up because as a biz when businesses want to move to town, they do look at who lives there, what's available. No are their question. employees going to want to live in town? Yeah. Uh, what kind of people live in town that are going to shop here or do this? So I think it's important. It's absolutely important. And, you know, t to your point, some of the things I've spoken to our new economic development director, Joy Zach, about was that, you know, if you look at a lot of the research that's been done on businesses locating sure. in different areas right now, I mean, weather field checks all those boxes. They want right. to be in a place where their employees can walk out of the office, walk down somewhere to a downtown for lunch, you know, after work, walk somewhere, right. go to their apartment that's right. close by, have parks to go to, trails to go to, right. and be close to an urban area. I mean, you right. can't really check the boxes better than, than, than Weathersfield can for those uh, things, but we've got we've to gotta maintain those things right. and bring them up to standard. Oh, yeah, and, and highway access. I mean, that's the other Absolutely. thing. We're right on 84, 91, yeah. we're Route 2. I mean, so, so we have to sell that story yeah. now because I don't think we've been doing that as, as a community to, you know, it's not going to be, you know, yeah. you know Apple's not going to move here sure. or Google's not no. going to move here. But some of these smaller tech companies will absolutely move to a place like Weathersfield because right. um, it's, it's a great place for their employees to be. Absolutely. Uh, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting the, uh, we're close to half an hour <laughs> from the producer. Uh, I think we hit on a lot of good things. This, uh, I'd love to have you come back more. Absolutely. And keep us Anytime. updated sure. uh, as things happen. As we get closer to referendum time or to any of those, we, you know, any big issues, I'd love to have you come on. I think we hit a lot of the good, ish, uh, good points that I always hear. People are always talking about economic development, taxes, the schools. So we, uh, we're happy to have you here. Thank we've, you. Uh, you know, we've been, a few uh, top administrative positions have changed sure. recently, with police chief and you and with economic development. And that can be a good thing. It can, because uh, I think sometimes you need that change. You need that outside perspective for someone to come in. Because sometimes you see it differently when you're in the house Certainly, yeah. yeah so, so, and I'll say that the people that have been brought on yeah. recently, you know, um, the the team we have here is strong. Good. And I, I see a great future for us here. Excellent. Well, Fred, thank you very much for My showing pleasure. up. My pleasure. My pleasure. Look forward to having you back again. Uh, again, people out there, really look up that school referendum issue. Go to the meetings. Be involved. Don't wait till the last minute. And then you say, well, I didn't know about this. I didn't know. So it's really important to do that. And I'm sure Fred is uh, willing to talk to anybody who uh, has uh, legitimate uh, concerns, complaints, or even positive things to say. So thank you all for watching Weatherfield Talk, and we'll see you next time.